Welcome back, Hope Squad. Do you struggle with ganking? Does your team flame you for not ganking enough? Do you just feel safer clearing camps? Do you not know how to build a lead through ganking? Well, in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to gank as a jungler. If you're new here, my name is Little Boy of Hope. I was able to reach Diamond 4 in preseason of 10. I've been coaching League part time for a couple of years now, and on this channel, my main goal is to help you get better at the game. If you want specific one on one coaching, join the Discord in the description box and DM me. And before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications for more educational videos. How do you know which lanes to gank and what are some good indicators for when to gank? As you can see, both the enemy Mordekaiser and Corky are overextended and we could gank either one. We know that Kale is weaker early into the game and that Riven is stronger early into the game than Kale. Also, Riven has a lot of CC and mobility, therefore making it no, easier to kill Corky. Also, notice how we wait for Corky to go last hit and then we gank. Six strong indicators that made this gank work. One, Riven's very mobile and has a lot of burst. Two, Vi is very mobile and has a lot of burst. Three, we have a great CC chain combo. 4. Corky is overextended, 5. Corky's HP was low, and 6. We waited for Corky to last hit for ganking, meaning he was focused on last hitting rather than looking at the map. Another strong indicator on when to gank is when they are chasing your allies. This goes for the same as last hitting, they're focused on something else so they aren't ready for you to gank them. We go in for the gank and they have to burn summoners to get away from us. This is still a huge win because even though we didn't get a kill, our laners now have an advantage in lane, that being heal and flash. If your laners are roaming, it's okay to cover their lanes. Best case scenario, you can swap as the laner and the laner can become the jungler. Riven roams top and kills the Mordekaiser, we just do her job and cover mid lane. This way we can prevent Corky from getting free gold from the turret platings. The thought process to holding this wave and slowly CSing here is that hopefully Corky will try to take advantage of his range and start bullying us. And when Quirky starts bullying us, maybe the Riven could come, bank, come come from behind and gank as a jungler. However, Quirky decides not to bully us, so we clear the waves and we go back to doing our camps. Here we see Quirky overextended again, trying to abuse his range versus the melee Riven. However, Riven has too much mobility in CC. Even though I missed my Q, we're still able to get a kill on Quirky. After killing someone once or twice, it's a lot easier to gank them the second or third time. One, because their summoners are down. Two, because the item difference and the stat difference is just too big. You can start forcing plays like this. Notice how even though Quirky wasn't overextended, we were still able to get the kill on him because of our ultimates, because of our items, and our damage. If you see the opportunity, you can always go for a lane gank as well. Mordekaiser was in his ultimate here, so I know that he has no vision on me walking up into the lane. We just walk up and get a free kill after the KO dies. Another important concept is to make sure you always pan your camera to fights before heading into fights so you know what abilities are down and who you can use. Here the gen flashes and so we know he has no mobility after dashing. We can confidently hit our Q here without worrying about Jin flashing away from it. Also, we know that Brand's R is on cooldown because we saw him use it. Notice how we always pan our camera to our enemies so we know exactly what they're doing. And like I said again, Corky's focusing on the minions. We walk up to the Corky, we hold our Q until he uses W, and then we land our combo on him. If you don't get used to panning your camera, you could walk into potentially bad situations like this. Imagine we're walking down here and we don't pan our camera. What if the Mordekaiser and Corky were fo both full HP and the Zerath was 1 HP? We probably wouldn't want to engage this fight. Because we see they're both lower HP and Zerath's cutting them back, Zerath's pretty healthy, we can make this play. Once we get into the mid game, that's when a lot of players start throwing their leads. It's gonna take a lot of time to learn how to play the mid game correctly, but for now you can keep it simple, group and fight in numbers advantage. Here Riven went 1 vs 5 and lost. Riven's KDA is sitting around 9-3 or something like that. This leads to Zerab getting caught out as well, trying to save Riven. Because of Riven's decision to 1 vs 5, the enemy team had a chance to close the gap by killing Riven and Zerab, allowing them to pressure the mid and group to contest Drake. Unfortunately, I tried to CC Ramus to outsmite Ramus, but I was unaware that you could still smite while knocked up. This leads to the enemy team closing the gap one more time because of Riven's decision to try to 1 vs 5 the enemy team. I see that Kale is splitting topside, almost gonna get in him, I wanna buy a little bit more time for her, especially since we lost the dragon. Unfortunately, I went for the Mordekaiser. If I would've gone for the Corky, it probably would've been a better play. We're able to buy enough time for the Kale, however, the enemy Jin is getting bigger and bigger. All because of the one decision that Riven made earlier. Through building solid leads with early game ganking fundamentals, we easily win the next team fight 3 vs 4, because Corky doesn't really matter, so it's a 3 vs 3 due to the fact that he overextended lane so many times and died so many times, his items and stats compared to ours is just too little to make a difference. 
Because of how we played in the early game translates to the mid game. The better you play the early game, the easier the mid game is. We easily turned a 3 vs 4 into a 3 vs 2 into a 3 vs 1. And then again into a 2 vs 1 against the brand. But we decide not to commit to the brand. Riven goes for the brand and actually gets soloed by the brand. But that's okay because we use Rift and we're able to get the inhib and another turret. Shortly after making this play, Riven, Kai'Sa, and myself are very fed. We want to further extend our lead by taking their jungle and denying them more gold and more farm and EXP. We pink the bush hoping to get a pick. However, we find the Mordekaiser in the mid lane and we pick off the Mordekaiser instead. And then that's an easy transition over to the Baron. After taking Baron, I decide I see Kale on the map, I see her team on the map. Maybe it's okay for me to make this play, but boy was I wrong. Where? What is Framus and Brand doing here? I mean, R Dragon's up, so it's, it's understandable the reason that they're here. But at the same time, Riven's in their base. And they have two super minion lanes going into the base. Anyways, I make a mistake there. However, Riven capitalizes on it because we have two super minion lanes going to their base. So anyways, even though I die, we still get Dragon and we still get their base. Regardless of my little mistake to greed for Dragon, we still get the Dragon, we get their base. We're able to play like this because we played very well in the early game. The better you play the early game, the easier the mid game is. We were able to get the Riven ahead, and the Riven was able to get the kill ahead. I was able to get the bot lane ahead, making team fights and getting objectives that much easier. If you're looking to learn how to carry as a jungle more consistently, you should head over into my jungle guide for beginners. Thanks again for your time, and Elbow is out.